Shocker! Butter from different regions are actually different. But what are the actual difference between those butters? Let's find out with what people also ask. Welcome to what people also ask. For those who don't know, Google has a very cool feature called people also ask. When you ask something on Google, it triggers an accordion telling you what people also ask about that query. One thing that you might not know is that it can actually be infinitely expanded because whenever you click any question in that section, it generates more question based on the question you just clicked. So here's my plan. I would like to pick one turn or phrase every time and try to read, read through as much as people also ask as possible and try to understand uh, what is about that entity and what people also ask about that entity. People also ask is one of my favorite features because uh, some of those question and answer really turn your world upside down. It is even more so when you are searching for something that you think you already know. Like you have no idea what bother it is. You really don't. So today's keyword is bother. Alright, so I have read through about a hundred of pop, aka people also ask, and uh, a lot. I just realized a lot of them share a similar thing, and one of the recurring things that I feel worth addressing is that there is a lot of people asking about why butter from different regions taste differently, look differently, and kind of behave differently when you try to use them for baking. So let's start with a very interesting bot asking why is Australian butter so yellow? I have never been to Australia, so I don't even know that Australian butter is yellow. Yellower. But apparently that is the thing, that's why people are asking about that on Google, right? So let's dig into it a little bit. The answer to this question was extracted from an article titled Battle of the Border, published by the Sydney Morning Herald, which is a daily newspaper in Sydney, New South Wales, Australia. This article published in December 13, 2010, and what is interesting is that this article is actually not talking about how good Australian butter is. It is actually talking about why European butter tastes better back then. They also talk about how can they improve their butter production process. However, there is a paragraph here answer the question why is Australian butter so yellow pretty well. Here is a paragraph extracted by Google. Australian dairy cattle graze on grass with high levels of beta carotene, the compound that makes carrots orange and butter yellow. Many European cattle are housed in barns and fed dry food contain less beta carotene. Wow, so what we learn here is that um, based on what the cows eat, the color of the butter made from their milk will differ. Who will thought of that? And it also opened another can of worm that why European claim they have better butter all the time. I always think it's just European being pretentious because come on, butter is butter. After I read through those paths and articles, now I understand it's not just European being pretentious. It is European being pretentious because they actually have better butter. I think it's a good time to talk about another two paths. Why is American butter so bad? And why does French butter taste better? Answer of these two questions were extracted from an article titled The Real Difference Between American Butter and European Butter published by Travelandisher.com and article titled Butter with a pedigree, ah, uh, the French, published by the New York Times. The first article is very straightforward. It points out that European butter usually have more butter fat content and is fermented. European butter is often fermented, giving it a tangy, slightly sour taste. These butters are often richer, more butter fat, making it ideal for baking things in milk quicker. The second article, written by Dory Greenspan, who is a, a culinary guru of New York Times, elaborate the difference between U.S. butter and French butter, especially the butter produced by Acquire Factory in France. Here are some excerpts from this article. By law, American butter must contain at least 80% butter fat, while the minimum for French butter is 82%. Two percentage points may sound measly, but since butter fat affects butter's flavor, texture, and workability, every little bit counts. Most industrially made American butters are not cultured and are laid sweet cream. Since every butter contains about 1-2% to milk solid, this means that burr acquired, I'm pretty much sure I did not pronounce it right, at 84% butter fat is only about 15% water, compared with about 19% in most American butter. So we learned two things here. The label sweet cream doesn't mean it's sweet. As we know that sweet cream butter are not sweet and I can verbalize how surprised I was the first time I bite into sweet cream butter and I find out, oh damn it's not sweet. Sweet cream butter means not fermented. There's a lot of misleading naming convention in dairy, isn't it? Like buttermilk. You think it's like a buttery milk? No, it's very tangy. And is it literally the unbuttered part that's separated from the cream during the butter production process? 
is abomination. Sorry, I digress. Well, the second things we learn here is that uh, European butter, especially French butter, actually has more butter fat. Of course, it tastes better, and also it's fermented. I'm not quite sure it actually enhances its flavor. After I read through this two article, I went to Stop and Shop, and for the first time, I skipped the generic Stop and Shop butter, and I got a European butter. I remember I got Finlandia. It's from uh, Finland, not French, but anyway. And as much as I don't want to admit it, it did taste better. So before I become even more pretentious, let's move on. Well, since we already talk about butter from U.S., Europe, and Pacific region, I think it's a good time to talk about butter from Asia. I want to talk about a butter brand at, that I have never heard of before I start the bad trip. Amol butter. Let's start from the first part about Amol butter. Is Amol the butter? It sounds like a very weird question at the first glance because if something is butter, how can you not know it's butter? If something is not butter, how can you not know it's not butter? But apparently, that is more to it than meet the eye, so let's dig into that. So the answer to this question was extracted from Amazon's product page selling Amol's butter, which is very interesting because usually Google extracts ads from an informational article. This is the first time I found extract an answer from a product page. Here is the product description. Amol is synonymous with butter in India. Several generations of Indian customers have grown up with the taste of Amol butter for six decades. Utterly bodily delicious taste of Amol butter is a must on the breakfast table of almost every Indian household. So Amol is butter, without a doubt, and it's very famous in India. But why do you even ask that question? Is that actually taste that different from the butter some people were used to? The next pet will answer this question. So here's the next pet. Why Amol butter is salty? The answer to this question was extracted from a very interesting article titled How Amol Become Utterly Butterly Delicious and Salty. This article published in 2007 by the Economic Times, which is an Indian newspaper headquartered in Mumbai, India. According to this very interesting article, people in India historically have problems storing the butter in a hot climate. As a result, they usually would heat the butter to boil away the water and precipitate the solid, making it a kind of purified butter called ghee. But then British arrived and the army felt that its battalion needed butter and set up military dairy farm across India. By 1930, the company called Posen had dominated the butter business. However, Posen's monopoly provoked a local farmer leader, Shubhavandas K. Patil, I'm sorry if I pronounce it wrong, to organize the cooperatives to compete with it, which would later become a mall. According to this article, unlike Posen, whose butter was usually made by steel cream, then processed to remove its odor, Amo only made their butter with fresh cream, milk to cream to butter, all on the same day. However, people in India have become too used to the heavily salted and fermented butter that Posen produced, so they found Amo's butter taste flat and flavorless. So, Amo had to come up with a solution and find it in a chemical additive called diacetyl that give it the required butter taste. They also had to increase salt and add coloring to give their white buffalo milk butter the yellowish color of cow's milk that people were used to. I used to wonder where can I get Amol butter. I tried to order it on Amazon, but it never delivered. Then I realized it's always there in the Indian grocery store around my place. And it is actually made from buffalo milk, which is very interesting. And it actually tastes very different. I can tell what's the difference, just very different. To be honest, I like Amol's ghee better. It's really good. Oh, did I just mention ghee? I think it's the best time to talk about another pet. Is butter and ghee the same? As I mentioned, they are not, but what exactly ghee is? The answer to this question was extracted from a very interesting article titled The Difference Between Butter and Ghee, published by The Tasting Table, which is a digital media company focused on food and drink based in New York. Here is some excerpt from this article. Ghee is butter minus the milk solids and water. During the cooking process, milk proteins and water are removed, resulting in a butter-like spread made of almost 100% pure butter fat. So is ghee the same as clarified butter, you ask? All ghee is considered clarified butter, but not all clarified butter is considered ghee, since ghee simmers longer and as a result turns the milk solid brown. Oh, that explains why ghee tastes so good, because it's like a condensed version of butter. Of course it tastes good. Well, let's recap. Today we learned that European butter, American butter, Pacific butter, and Indian butters are actually different. And 
、uh, butter and ghee are also different. And the chemical compound that gives butter its yellowish color is called beta carotene. And the chemical compound that gives the butter its butter taste is called diacetyl. There's another thing I want to talk about during my pad trip. I realize that there is a lot of article talking about、um, different butter from different regions. One pattern that I realize is that almost all this article implicitly or explicitly insinuate that European butter is somewhat better. It's not just published from United States.、Um, the publisher from Australia and the publisher from India also insinuate that European butter is somewhat better. Does that make European butter objectively tastier? Or is it just that European culture is historically more dominant, so we are more prone to think that their things are just somewhat better? So here's my question: Can we say certain food is objectively tastier than other, or when it comes to tastiness, it's just a matter of preference? Let me know your thought. And see you later. Hi! I just want to let you know it's a good time to hit the subscribe button. I know you are questioning why you should do that, but you know you can't always questioning everything, right? If you are gonna questioning this right now, what are you gonna question next? Your life, Santa Claus, climate change. You know, sometimes you just need to have faith. So just do it. Bye.